can be seen from this Canadian agricultural film from 1979, the threat of the gypsy moth is not new. The male gypsy moth is a drab, insignificant looking insect that has but one function, to seek and mate with the female of the species. The offspring of the moth, the larval or caterpillar stage of its life cycle, also has just one purpose, and that is to eat. The gypsy moth is an invasive pest that often makes its way here to the northwest. There's parts of 20 states back east where it's permanently established and quarantines are in place. So we get introductions in the northwest occasionally from people who move from back east and inadvertently will bring an egg mass attached to some outdoor articles and those egg masses hatch here and then we have them here. There's also another variety of the gypsy moth, the Asian gypsy moth, which is native to Asia, which we sometimes get, not often, get introductions in port environments. They come over on ships, and so the Port of Tacoma, the Port of Seattle, Vancouver are likely areas where we'll get an introduction of the Asian gypsy moth. The life cycle of the gypsy moth starts in the late summer, with the female laying between 100 to 1,500 eggs. Once hatched in the spring, the caterpillars go through three stages. These stages are the most damaging, as caterpillars will feed on the leaves of a large variety of trees, and depending on infestation size, are capable of defoliating millions of acres of forest in a single year. In the warmer months, they enter the pupa stage, in which they metamorphose into the adult gypsy moth, with the purpose to mate and start the life cycle all over again. This will be used in the field to monitor for the gypsy moths. This uh, has a uh, sticky substance inside that, uh, that holds it in place. It has a pheromone that emulates the female pheromones that attracts the male to them. In 2015, the Washington State Department of Agriculture trapped 10 Asian gypsy moths and 32 European gypsy moths in western Washington. This was the highest number of these moths ever trapped in the state. With these findings, experts advised the WSDA to put together a treatment plan for the area where these pests were found. We convened a technical working group to get their recommendations on what they thought we should do. We had an idea of how to best approach it, but we wanted to get some other opinions from some subject matter experts around the country. Um, and they determined that eradication is clearly our number one goal for this pest. And the best way to do that is to apply a pesticide to, to rid the pest. The treatment zone in Tacoma is among the largest areas in the state at 7,000 acres. That includes portions of Port of Tacoma, Northeast Tacoma, Fife, and Milton. BTK is a product that's been used widely over the last 20 years. It's a naturally occurring soil bacteria. It's certified for organic use, so a lot of organic farmers will use this product if they want to maintain their organic status or, or sell their products as organic in the field. It's, uh, it's very specific. It's only effective on caterpillars. So the caterpillar has to ingest the leaves that have this product on it, and then that's how it's activated. Once the caterpillar ingests the product, it activates in the caterpillar's gut, and then the caterpillar ceases to feed and eventually dies. The timing of spring is critical to successful control of the gypsy moth, and it's through the monitoring of certain key elements that give the signal it's time to start treatment. As a field person, I monitor the egg masses that's out in the uh, field, and I check for, you know, uh, once a week for, see if they, they're hatching or they're getting ready to hatch. And when they, if I see any, any uh, larva emerging, that's when I contact my boss to let them know that, hey, you know, we have hatching, hatching going on right now. There's an economic advantage to removing this pest from the area. If the gypsy moth established itself here, it would not only mean a loss of foliage to Tacoma's urban forest, but it could put restrictions on trade and export of forest products and nursery stock. The defoliation of the trees has environmental impacts, recreational impacts. More importantly, if it were to become established, there'd be restrictions on trade with the export of forest products, Christmas trees, nursery stock, that sort of thing. So there's an economic advantage to keeping this pest out of here as well. It was back in 1869 that a well-meaning scientist imported the European gypsy moth to cross with native moths for the purpose of producing silk. The experiment was a failure, and the gypsy moth escaped. Now it is firmly established in the United States and Canada. And so far, nature, unaided, has been unable to control it. <laughs>